people upon Uthman ibn Affan the loss of his spouse the loss of his wife that the first wife that he was married to was Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Qabla al-Nubuwa he married her before prophethood and because due to her sickness that was a prevention why he did not participate in the battle of Badr and then after the loss of Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha he married Umm Kulthum another daughter of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then upon her death as well or he was called Dhun Nurain the individual with two lights being married to two daughters of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam لو كان لي ثلاثة لزوجته if I had a third daughter who was unmarried I would have given it to Uthman ibn Affan are the words of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sacrifice of his wealth as we find that the Prophet Muhammad stated whoever purchases the well in Medina will have paradise given to them and a Jewish man began to increase the price intentionally knowing that this is a prime location for the Muslims and he paid 20,000 dirhams for the purchase of this well for the benefit of the Muslims the extension of Masjid al-Nabawi the land was purchased by none other than Uthman ibn Affan a sacrifice now of his wealth and in the ninth year of Hijri where the Emperor the Emperor of the Byzantium reign or dominance came upon to attack the Muslims and he donated a thousand camels and a thousand gold coins towards the cause of Islam and then the Prophet Muhammad stated about him ma darra Uthman ma fa'ala ba'da al-yawm no matter what he does after this day it will not harm him and this hadith is narrated by Imam Tirmidhi and checked by the late Sheikh Nasruddin al-Albani that whatever he does after this day if he does make a mistake it will never harm him because this is the praise of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa upon Uthman ibn Affan and in another hadith we find غفر الله لعثمان ما تقدم من ذنبه وما تأخر Allah has forgiven may he forgive Uthman of his previous sins and his future sins even though there's some da'af there's some weakness in this narration attributed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and then we find sacrifice of his life sacrifice his land loss of his family sacrifice of his wealth and now he's willing to sacrifice his life and that is the beginning of the hadith that I mentioned اِئْذِن لَهُ اِئْذَن لَهُ وَبَشِّرْهُ بِالْجَنَّةِ وَالْبَلْوَ تُصِيبُهُ give him glad tidings and permission to enter and a calamity that will fall upon him and that calamity is none other than the killing of Uthman ibn Affan that he was made shaheed in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala awalul fitan qatlu Uthman wa akhirul fitan khuruju dajjal the beginning of the trials and tribulations of this ummah will be through the beginning of the killing of Uthman and the end of the trials and tribulations will be khuruju dajjal the coming of ad dajjal and that's why we find that blood the spilling of blood occurred twice in the whole of the history of this world from the beginning of creation the first spilling of blood was between two blood brothers the two sons of Adam salam, that when one killed the other one that the sin of the killing or the spilling of blood falls upon that brother and then we find a second time the fitna that occurs in the, specifically in the Muslim Ummah is the spilling of a Muslim blood the blood of Uthman ibn Affan وَيَسْفِكُ the spilling of blood will become common on the land and amongst the Muslims as well it's a fitna which has never been replaced through the killing of Uthman ibn Affan because we find that these people invented false claims about him that he is placing people that he loved and people of his family in authority and they even invented a false letter that they claim was signed by Uthman ibn Affan and the lesson that we learn إِذَا جَاءَكُمْ فَاسِقٌ بِنَبَئٍ فَتَبَيَّنُوا if a rebellious individual or people you can't trust 
come with some information فَتَبَيَّنُوا seek clarity and evidence for that which is being said about an individual and then we find that these rioters or these individuals they laid siege upon the house of Uthman ibn Affan failed anything to enter his house and stopped him from leaving this house and amongst those great companions who, who guarded this house were none other than Al-Hassan wal Hussein wa Abdullah ibn Zubayr wa Muhammad ibn Talha are those who stood in guard and protection and many of the Muarrikhun the historians they write that the way they entered into this home was via the roof and they entered there and they killed him and Imam Suyuti in specific he writes that when they did make him shaheed and that the blood spilled on the verses of the Quran فَسَيَكْفِيكَهُمُ اللَّهُ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Sufficient is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these people and he is the all hearing, the all knowing. Many of the Mufassirun take this stance that this is where the blood spilled is a mu'jiza, is a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَسَيَكْفِيكَهُمُ Allah. Allah is sufficient to judge these people and to bring them to accountability because of the evil that they have done. And the lesson that we learn وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهُ غَافِلًا عَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمُونَ don't ever be, think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unaware of what the transgressing people are doing at the moment. إِنَّمَا يُؤَخِرُهُمْ لِيَوْمٍ تَشْخَصُ فِيهِ الْأَبْصَارِ Verily we are delaying them for a day that when their eyes will be overturned, that when death will come upon these people. So don't think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghafil, unaware of the atrocities that are being committed upon the Muslim at the moment. وأقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولجميع المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد As for the spilling of the blood on these verses of the Quran towards the first juz of Surah Al-Baqarah that this is a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and likewise shows the dedication that he had towards the Quran that the Quran that we read today is highlighted as Mus'haf Uthmani the script or the compilation of Uthman ibn Affan that if we go and look in Sahih al-Bukhari in the compilation of the Quran that the second compilation was the instigation and under the authority of Uthman ibn Affan and many of the hadith which are narrated about Uthman ibn Affan or he narrates and the most famous hadith narrated about him or which he states is khayrukum man ta'allam al-Qur'an wa'allamahu the best amongst you is he who learns the Qur'an and teaches it to people another miracle that dying whilst reading the Qur'an compiling the Qur'an and the narrating the most famous hadith about the Qur'an has been narrated by Uthman ibn Affan خَسْلَتَانْ لِعُثْمَانْ لَيْسَتَ لِأَبِي بَكَرْ وَلَا لِعُمَرْ Two strong characteristics that we find in Uthman ibn Affan that we don't find in Abu Bakr and Umar رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَنْهُمَا صَبْرُهُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ حَتَّى قُتِلَ His patience until he was killed knowing full well that he was going to be attacked and going to be killed. وَجَمْهُ nas عَلَى الْمُصْحَفِ And the collecting of mankind upon the Qur'an. That is two characteristics that did not exist inside Abu Bakr and Umar. And as for the revelation which talks about Uthman ibn Affan, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with those people who took the bay'ah who took the pledge underneath the tree some 1400 in, in number فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي and he knew what was inside their hearts if you read the tafsir of these verses these verses are talking about Uthman ibn Affan, Affan that when he took the pledge in Sul'ul Hudaybiyah and Uthman ibn Affan was gone to discuss with the Quraysh and they prevented him from returning back and the rumor spread that they have killed him and then the Prophet Muhammad took a pledge from every single individual and then he placed his hand his left hand on his right hand 
and he said this is for our brother Uthman ibn Affan and we will not retract and what is this pledge? Hatta al maut until death we will seek retribution for our brother Uthman ibn Affan so it becomes difficult that the lesson that we learn to retaliate against the people who give a pledge Hatta al maut that until death they will carry on for their struggle for the pleasure of seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as for surrounded by his harshness and calamities we find still Uthman ibn Affan that he is not an individual who is stern and harsh rather he is an individual who is quite the opposite as we find the famous hadith whereby the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is sitting inside his ghurfa kashifan and fakhidayhi aw saqayhi revealing his leg or his thigh as narrated by